Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the bill to introduce state police has killed second reading uh, in the National Assembly. And we're being joined by Mr. Abiodun Ishomi, who is a political affairs analyst who will be talking on this topic. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Ishomi. Okay. I can't seem to hear you. Um, I don't know. Yeah, good morning. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Very good. Now, uh, the bill to introduce state police has passed second reading, and, you know, we, have, we are very close to it. What are your concerns, or what are your high points, if you, if you may, whatever it is? <laughs> yes, um, we've been on this issue of um, state police um, as part of um, federalism. Um, when you practice true federalism in a federation, you only have the... Um, the federating units and the coordinating center, which is the federal government. And therefore, um, the idea of maintaining security is the responsibility of both the federal and the constituting states, you know, in the case of Nigeria. But what we have is over the years, um, the state governors have been uh, tasked with the responsibility of being the chief security officer of their state with no control, no direct control over either the appointment, the choice, or the discipline, or the regulation of the conduct of uh, police uh, institutions within their state. So consequently, making them just like a, a, a paper uh, with a um, chief security officer. The control has always been in the center, simply because the um, schedule in the schedule of the, the the attached to the constitution, the responsibility for policing um, is strictly that of um, the exclusive right of the federal government. is not on the concurrent list, and because of that, we've had series of issues over a period of time relating to security of lives and property in different parts of the country. The weaknesses of the federal structure, federal policing structure, you know, then became so obvious. It is not more obvious than now that even people could not go to farm. Many people felt threatened and uh, being harassed locally. And the response time, you know, from the federal government has always been very slow. States where we've been able to arrest security challenges uh, are states where they have a kind of um, a mini outfit, a mini security outfit provided for by the uh, state's um, assets of assembly. But they are not as equipped or coordinated as the Nigerian police force. So learning from that angle and coming from that angle and learning from it, um, it then becomes so obvious that state's police institutions can only help to improve security. Because the states are concerned, they know their environment, they are concerned about uh, security issues in the environment. Everybody knows everybody in certain communities, and therefore, it would be a lot easier to police those communities. Unlike trying to police the whole country from Abuja, um, you know, it can't work, and that has become so obvious. So, one must uh, say the time is right for uh, a legislation to change the situation. Fortunately, those who are opposed to state police are now the one you know, championing the cause currently because of the security situation in the country. You can imagine if you have state police in Benue, it will have been impossible, almost impossible, you know, to, to, to have sustained killings of people um, as what we are witnessing in Benue. Same thing in Kaluna, that would not have been possible because the governors would have risen to the occasion and stopped the carnage. You know, going on in those parts of the country. Okay. So what about, what about, what about yeah. the recruitment process? Do you think it should be left for the state or the recruitment and training should be done by the federal and then the states will take over? When you look at the bill, um, which is being, which has just passed through the second state, they are trying to address some of the concerns of people who think uh, maybe the issue of standardization will be a problem. At what stage will the uh, federal police get involved? Um, how would uh, we ensure that the commissioner of police in the state is not turned into a tool of the governor and all that? They've been trying to address some of these issues, including recruitment and standardization. Um, of course, they will be trained to the same standard as federal police, and that is part of the reason why um, the commissioner of police is being suggested as containing this bill, which I just passed the second reading, to come from the federal police. Uh, while 
answerable to the state um, government, including you know the state police service uh, commission, which will have the utmost responsibility for discipline. So it's if if the bill has been pushed currently, you know, can see the light of the day. I have no doubt that at least the recruitment will be the same. You know, the standard, the training, operational procedures, and all of that will be the same. And some of the fears of, uh, of um, those who are opposed to state police may not be realized eventually because they are trying to build in safeguards into it to ensure that those will not happen. It's a different thing whether it will not pass, go through the, 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 the required, um, um, apart from us of um, National Assembly, the required two third of states' houses of assembly. If it's approved as it is being presented currently, um, I think um, we will have gone a long way to address the issue of standardization, the issue of operational procedure, the issue of at what stage can the federal police get involved, is when there's a total breakdown of law and order, and again on the invitation of the state government. So I think they are working on a very good bill which uh, we should be supported. Okay, uh, my concern is having state police is one thing but being able to fund it is another thing a lot of states have not even been able to pay minimum wage and all that and right now the sharing formula for the uh, allocation the FAC allocation is 52 percent to the federal government while 26 percent comes to the states and 20 percent uh, or 20.6 percent comes to the local government can these states uh, fund these state police that we're talking about or we'll just have state police very strong in one state and in the other state because they cannot fund it maybe they have just 10,000 personnel well uh, currently many of the state governments are funding uh, a section of um, policing uh, even though is on the exclusive list. They do not have responsibility for it currently. If you go to some states, in Lagos State you have RRS uh, in Ogo State, you have KRS, you have all these manners of formations all over the whole place, including buying armored vehicles for police, including buying uniform, you know, uh, guns and all that. We have records of that going on currently uh, in order to keep the federal police. So basically, it means even the federal government has not been able to adequately equip the Nigerian police force. Uh, that's, uh, that is what that shows. But when it comes to the issue of state police, we should not forget that that would the funding of it will actually come you know from the federal allocation it's not a matter of asking the states to uh, provide state police without providing the means for the states um to to finance them of course there would have to be an adjustment to the federal budget uh, to the, the 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 sharing principle of um, the federal allocation in order to make provision for it otherwise we will only have maybe a third of the states or 50 percent of the states able to adequately fund state police while the rest are unable to adequately fund them but if we think the cost of policing is um, um is high we really need to look at the cost of not policing that is society would uh, fracture and uh, probably collapse you know or currently people are worried not only about uh, poverty they are worried about insecurity and we've seen how insecurity can affect you know, food production in the country, the agricultural outputs. And that has led, partly led, you know, to the rising cost of um, foodstuffs in the country. So, therefore, it's um, important for us to have state police and at the same time ensure that they are adequately funded to the same standards in each state. Mm. Okay, Mr. Shomi, we'd like to thank you for being a part of our show today. Uh, I'm glad that a lot of people are on the same page about this uh, state police, and we do hope that the right policies, the right, um, the right T's and the I's are dotted and crossed so that we have state police that will make us proud and security will be top-notch. Thank you for being a part of our program today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We've been talking to Mr. Abiodun Shoumi, uh, a public affairs analyst. We were talking about the fact that uh, state police, the bill for state police has passed the second reading in the National Assembly. We'll take a short break now. We'll return with uh, the next hot topic. Stay with us.